What's going on, guys? We have got an absolute banger of a tactic today. Now, this tactic is going to be a free at the back, and it is classed as an underdog tactic. So the main focus is going to be with smaller teams today. We are going to throw in a powerhouse for those of you that are going to be playing as those. But be sure to leave a like on this video. Let's waste no more time. I'll talk a little bit more about this tactic. So what is good guys, this is going to be a free at the back system, now I will say with this tactic, at its best with a powerhouse, it actually went invincible, winning 33 out of 34 games, and with Crystal Palace, you're going to see the result I got, it absolutely cooked, I'm going to waste no more time today, let's get into the results, we are going to go over the top team first, because obviously the main focus is going to be with the underdog team, so let's get the big boy out of the way. Oh, well, this is going to be the results with that powerhouse team, that is going to be PSG over in France, and as you can see, it is very, very convincing, the trophy to champ Hopefully you enjoy the French twist. That is going to be a win over Toulouse on penalties. We love to be seeing that. The French Cup, we are also going to win over FC Nantes in 6-0 fashion. The Champions League will claim that as well when a won the win over Real Madrid. But the real impressive thing here is going to be the league. Now, if you feast your eyes on this, 33 wins out of their potential 34. One draw coming in against Nice at home. Close to being 34 out of 34. Zero losses, 100 points, 128 goal difference. Kylian Mbappe, Kanging Lee, and Asenjo all pick up first, second, and third when it comes to the goals. Best in the average rating, best in the assist category, the most clean sheets. We absolutely cooked everyone. Most points per game, most goals, most shots, fewer shots against, most dribbles, fewest conceded, only 10 across the entire season, and most clean sheets. Now, possession-wise, we're not going to be too high, and I will say this very clearly, this is not a possession-based tactic, so for those of you that do like that, be sure to go and check out another tactic from this channel, because there is going to be loads of those that are going to cater for your needs. But this one is a lot of fun to play regardless, very counter-attack and inspired, and as you can see, when you're scoring over four goals a game, I am not fussed about possession. We're averaging over 21 shots a match, an 88% pass completion, which is very good for a counter-attack and inspired tactic and a 76% tackle win ratio. Now, I mean, you can't really complain at them stats. And this French Cup final was an absolute breeze against Nantes, obviously in 6-0 fashion, just showcasing some of the highlights now because the chances you create are very high quality. And as you can see right now, it's a very good goal to start things off. Mbappe now down the left-hand side into Mendes, into Lee, who's going to go alone back in the middle into Mbappe. And if you just feast your eyes just into the centre circle there of that box, you can see how many people actually get in there. It's very difficult to defend against. And it's just, look at the options. I mean, that's our left-back in that much space, getting in dangerous areas. And if you've got a left-back that can finish, they are the results you can expect. Vitinha now goes through into Mbappe, through one-on-one. -on -one. You know what he's going to do. He's not going to miss. It's Kylian Mbappe. As we build up again now with Hernandez, driving at the back line, going out to the left, into Mendes. Again, pause it here. You've got four options to play with in the box. One on the edge, which I'll just, hopefully you can see this just here, and one option far post in Hakimi. Who's it going to go to? Probably this guy into Danilo. It actually goes to Lee. Danilo leaves it. Lee gets his goal. What a goal that is. One more to come. That is going to be Mbappe. Mbappe will take it. Now let's go to the most challenging test in this save, or this test and save. It is going to be Crystal Palace. A team predicted to finish in 12th. That made it a lot more difficult for me because obviously I can make zero signings, whereas you guys can go out and obviously make signings since you're just playing the game. For me, I don't like to do that in tactic testing because then it gives so many variations of what ifs. So we've come out, we've put on a very good display, I will say, getting to the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. Unfortunately, Brentford were a little bit too strong for us, but I am not fussed at all because we are going to get Europe European football in that first season and by the way, Edward, top goal scorer in the Prem. Absolutely nuts. We love to see that. I will say this tactic does rip shots off at the goal, though. So it probably is to be expected. Mitchell, highest average rating. Mitchell and Munoz joint. Actually, that's all. For, oh, wow. That is three people joint first when it comes to the assist, which I've never seen before. That's why I was a little bit shocked. But overall, it was quite a decent season. Obviously, out position in United, Arsenal, Chelsea, some of the real big teams in the league. Stat-wise, I'm not sure how many we're going to have. Actually, quite a few. This is what I like to see. Top goal scorers in the league with 88 goals, outscoring Villa, Liverpool, City, Tottenham, Newcastle, Chelsea, them real big boys. The most shots, Absolutely remarkable stuff right there. Data hub wise, I imagine we are just about, oh, not over a goal, just one goal conceded per game, but we are going out and scoring 2.32, having over 16 shots a game, maintaining that pass completion. And that's really good to see with a team like Palace, who obviously are playing in the hardest league in the world. And without no disrespect to Palace fans, not got the best team in the world. And I will say this, I'm going to show you the actual team they played, just to show you they're not playing any reserves. We actually beat Arsenal 6 0 in the league on the last game of the season. Just to 
clarify that. Now, if we actually go into this, we've got to see some of the goals as well. It's Eze who played such a big part in this season, by the way. Mitchell down the left is going to take his time back in the middle, and it's an absolute rocket of a finish past Aaron Ramsdale. Absolutely incredible start. And we go again. The left-hand side seems to be a little bit vulnerable for Arsenal, it seems, as we go 2-0 up by the same goal scorer into the bottom right corner. These goals aren't just little tap-ins. They are incredible quality. Winning the ball back there into Edward, who, by the way, had, well, a top goal scorer in season. Absolutely nuts from him. Tucks away a penalty as well. His second goal of the game. Is he going to complete his hat-trick? We're going to find out. Decore now goes into Klein down the right-hand side, who absolutely, he just gets past everyone. A great ball in the box. A great finish from Eze. One more goal to come. Is it going to be Edward? I don't think it is going to be. It's Mitchell down the left-hand side. Loads of space in the box, and it is going to be Lerma. What a game. Up next is going to be a bit of Bundesliga 2 action. That is going to be 8th place predicted. Paderborn, obviously over in the second tier of Bundesliga football. Quite a bit of a mixy league. Quite tough to get out of sometimes. We have made it look quite easy. The Pock all got to the quarterfinals, but of course, we are not at the same standard of RB Leipzig, so we're not expected to get past that stage of the competition. However, in the Bundesliga, as you can see, we only lose 6 games out of 34, win 27, and draw the other one. Second top goal scorer when it comes to the rating first and third, and also the player who did get their highest average rating, picked up the most assists as well. So even in a sort of, you know, a tougher league like this, the Bundesliga 2 is a bit of one of them leagues where, you know, St. Pauli, Schalke, Herfer, they usually do dominate it. So there is quite a tough league. It's no walk in the park. So we are going to take this and run with these results. We really are, as we do actually outscore all of those teams I did mention. Schalke are actually really low down with pretty much half of the goals we got. The most points per game coming in, the most shots, defensively clean sheets, we're not going to be on there. So I will say when it comes to the defensive side, we weren't as strong in this division. As you can see, seventh place when it comes to the fewest conceded, but we were the strongest when it comes to goals being scored. So it didn't really matter. Obviously, I know it can be frustrating conceding goals, but as you can see here, we are scoring double to what we are going to be conceding. So it rarely does become an issue. Now, of course, I will go over a couple of tweaks when we break down the tactic to maybe prevent some of them goals going in. But you've got to understand with this tactic, it's very attacking where you are going to be accepting to concede in a goal, but scoring two to three a game. That is the sort of vibe we're going down. But it does average over 16 shots a game, practically 17, 87% pass completion, and a very tasty tackle win ratio. That's quite a big recovery game here in the league, as we actually got off to a, well, a really bad start. And I'm just showing this to prove to you guys that you obviously are going to concede goals now and then. It will be frustrating, but what you will do is, is have an impact like this. So when you're playing this way, you can go out and absolutely destroy teams, as we done here, in 4-1 fashion. We got back into the game around 30 minutes after we conceded that goal. We then go into the second half energized, ready to take over. And as you can see, a little bit lucky. It is a little bit lucky, but we take the lead in the 55th minute and in the 57th minute, we come in and we capitalize on a team which is looking, I'll say it how it is, quite vulnerable. Quite vulnerable at the back. We come in, put ourselves 3-1 up, Time for one more goal in the 78th minute. It's going to be from a set piece. Costan's done the right-hand side. Tons of space, a ball in, and an even better header. We'll take it. And lastly, up the crew. A team predicted to finish in 20th place in Skybet League 2. In terms of the Cups, this one and this one aren't too much to talk about. But can we just have a little conversation? semi-finals of the FA Cup. Unfortunately, we are playing Man City, so we're not going to beat a team like Man City. But in terms of that Skybet League 2, we were absolutely ridiculous. We only lost five games out of 46, drew the other five. We put on a very, very good season. Lewis Leah comes in, or Lewis Leah comes in with 22 goals. It's going to be a first and a third place finish when it comes to the average rating and also picking up the most assists and the most clean sheets. So I will say from what I've noticed, defensively, we really do thrive in these English leagues. I will say that really good when it comes to that element of the game. I will say in the Bundesliga, obviously, whatever tactic you have in this game, it performs different in different leagues. We did leak more goals, but we conceded more. Whereas with Crew, we were a lot more defensively solid, despite still being a very weak team in their respective league. But as you can see from the stats, we were really, really dominant. Fewest conceded, most clean sheets, most dribbles at 821, most shots at not shy of a thousand, fewer shots against, most goals, which is by the way, not a little bit more goals. I'm talking a lot more goals than Wimbledon in second. And of course, the most points per game. Data Hub boys, we are going to go and have a little look. It's going to be 2.85 goals per game. Only 0.78 conceded. Over 20 shots a game at 20.6. A great pass completion and a great tackle win ratio. It's really refreshing to see a tactic that can put up a high level of goals in such a tough competition with one of the weaker teams. It really is.
This is just a perfect example of this tactic. It's fine to concede one or two goals. In this case, we conceded three. And as you can see, we actually did get off to the goal scoring to start. They do bounce back from a set piece. Nothing we can really much do as it is just going to be a bit of a poor clearance. No one on the edge to deal with it. And it's a great finish into the bottom left corner. But this just goes to show that it doesn't matter you're going to concede the odd goal here and there because you've got the firepower to realistically, that was a bit lucky that goal, but you've got the firepower to realistically go out and outscore them. And as you can see at the moment, it is going to be 2 1 to us. We've got to make it 3 1. A great bit of play through the middle. Quite simple. Gets the job done to make it 3 1 to us. But at any stage of this game, despite this penalty going in to make it 3 2, I always know we have the firepower, as we're going to see here, to make it 4 2. Great little bit of play. Ended up being a little bit lucky, but we'll take it. You've always got that in the locker. 5 2 now. A great ball in and even better header into that near post. Nothing Cartwright can do in goal. Another set piece action coming now. Oh, a shocker from the goalkeeper there. And it is now going to be 7-2. Another set piece in. I think we figured out by this point their goalkeeper can't handle set pieces. And of course, if you get a goal here, it's going to be Wood driving at the back line into Wilson through one-on-one. -on -one. He tucks it away, but it doesn't matter. Now, of course, your favourite part of the video is going to be the tactic breakdown. If you are enjoying yourselves today, please do leave a like. It will be much appreciated. And subscribe to the FM Scout channel. And if you enjoy myself as a creator, you can come and check out my content in the description. I post tactics, also some rebuilds on my second channel. You come get in, come get involved. Come say hello. I absolutely love seeing you boys over on there. And of course, we do manager replications over there. So if you want to see your favorite manager recreators, that's the place to go. But let's go over and talk about this tactic. So it is going to be a very attacking free. 4-2-1. One of my favourite three backs, a little fun fact, probably not interested, but hey-ho, it is going to be a sweeper keeper coming in, simply on tackle harder. Quite nice to see Nap get this introduced now, because most of the time, I know with stuff that I make, it is usually quite default when it comes to the sweeper keeper, so having that instruction on is quite refreshing to see. A ball playing defender on the right is going to be told to dribble more and tackle harder, as the player in the middle is going to be, as the player on the left is going to be. So they're all the same instruction-wise, so I'm not going to waste your time with that. A wing back on the left is is going to be on support and on tackle harder, as is the right-hand side. Quite basic instructions for these wing-backs, because at the end of the day, we don't want them going too fully up, as in, you know, dribble more, take more risks, because they have got a defensive job to do as well. That is quite common sense. Two Volantes come in on attack now. Both are going to be exactly the same. So far, it's quite a nice mirror tactic. Mirror meaning, obviously, exactly the same as the left and on the right. A very good setup here from Nap. A shadow striker on attack, on tackle harder, and on the right is going to be exactly the same. And the advanced four, is also going to be on default on tackle harder and some of you boys might be thinking not as many instructions as this one and to be honest with you you don't always need tons of instructions to make a great tactic I think that's one of the myths in football manager where a lot of people think oh I've not got many instructions on it's going to be bad not at all sometimes the basic of the basic works very very well it doesn't overcomplicate things and as you can see in this system it definitely didn't do that this is all based off a custom tiki tacker on the attacking mentality just to clarify in possession it's going to be set to fairly wide pass into space we're going to overlap left and overlap right while focusing down the left and the right-hand side of the pitch. We're going to go to shorter when it comes to the passing, a higher tempo, run at defence and low crosses. So basically... For anyone wondering, this is set up heavily for the counter-attack, as you can see from the dribbling style, which is to be expected. In transition, it is going to be still based around that counter, counter-press to win the ball back, and when we've won that ball back, you're going to see both wing-backs and then front three players fly forward and hit on that counter. We're going to play the ball quickly to get the ball moving, obviously helps the counter-attack and style as well, and we're going to roll the ball out to the centre-backs. In terms of out of possession, it is going to be the much higher defensive line. I know Nap loves that. Much more often, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, get stuck in and of course step up more and that's going to complete for you boys this is going to be the Argus Nap 3421 P107 all cup so that's a bit of a mouthful but it is a very good very good free at the back system if you have enjoyed again be sure to leave a like check out the other content me and Jake do provide on this channel have a great day that's the main thing and I'll see you in the next one